Welcome back to another Porsche car whisper video. As you guys can see, I'm in a Taycan yet again this week. I'm doing another requested video. Shout out to you, Sanjiv. On what are the different drive modes on the Taycan? When should you use them? And how does it change the driving dynamics of the car as well as range? There's quite a few factors that the different drive modes are gonna change inside of your Taycan. Let's go ahead and get into it. So let's go ahead and start off by talking about the normal mode. The normal mode is what your Taycan is gonna start off in when you first start the vehicle. Normal mode is the biggest mix between efficiency as well as performance. So it's not gonna change a bunch of driving dynamics. I'm gonna cover kind of four main driving dynamics in this video that your car will change as soon as you change it into those different modes. So with normal mode, the car is gonna preferably start in the second gear, unless you're driving it pretty quick, then it may start in the first gear. It just depends kind of on your throttle response. The throttle response is gonna be just normal. It's not gonna be over aggressive as soon as you're pressing the, uh, the accelerator pedal. It's the all-wheel drive distribution. It's gonna, of course, be in all-wheel drive mode when you're driving in, in normal mode. The electric sport sound will not be turned on unless, of course, you change it when you're here through the PCM. The chassis is just gonna be in the regular setting. It's not gonna lower or raise the car. Same thing kind of with the dampeners. Not gonna stiffen up the suspension at all. Just gonna be kind of kind of cruising. So that's pretty much the normal mode. The climate control won't change much either. It's gonna be just in the normal, normal range. So the air will be blowing. If you have any passengers in the rear, uh, it'll still be blowing, that kind of thing. So that's kind of a quick overview of the normal mode. Not gonna change much. Now range mode. Let's talk about range mode. The main time I would use range mode is if I was going on a long road trip and I need to maximize my range because this is going to change a lot of the driving dynamics here on the car. So first off, you're actually going to be able to limit the speed of your Taycan. It's either going to be between 55 of max or 86 miles an hour for the max when you're in range mode. You can change that when you're through the PCM by just going into the vehicle settings and changing how fast you want your car to be able to go. Now, with the range mode, the transmission will preferably start off in second gear because we want maximum efficiency, and with second gear, we're not using as much power. It's not gonna have to shift through the different through the through two different gears. We're just starting right in that second gear. The drive distribution is going to change a little bit. So if it's very, very low power, the car is just gonna be driving off of its front wheels. It's not gonna be using its all-wheel drive system. Now, of course, if you gas it real quick, or accelerate it, I guess you could say, because this car is an electric, the car will start using its all-wheel drive system uh, as that uses a little bit more power. Um, but that's pretty much how the drive distribution will be. The electric sport sound, of course, will be off. That just is kind of unnecessary power that the, that the car will be drawing if you're trying to get range. Climate control is going to change pretty substantially. So it's either going to go into Eco or you can switch it into Eco Plus. Biggest difference is it's not going to be blowing quite as much air. So inside of the cabin, it's not going to be quite as comfortable as maybe you're used to it being. It's because we don't want to be using as much power when we're in range mode. So if, you're, if you have the four zone climate control in the back, it's not going to be turning really the air on either. It's because nobody's back there. So what's the point of kind of using more power when we don't need to. It's gonna change the power of the headlights. So the headlights aren't gonna be as bright as they usually are when you're in range mode. Um, they're gonna be a little bit brighter in all the other modes, but again, efficiency is the key. Same thing with adaptive cruise control. It's not gonna be drawing quite as much power when we're in range mode. We don't need to be using as much power either. And now, Biggest thing is gonna be thermal management. So when we're in th the thermal management or just the battery heating and cooling is gonna be the most what we call kind of loosey-goosey. We don't need to keep it in a very specific specified range. That's more of a performance thing. So it may take a while to heat or cool the battery. So if you're going on that long road trip, put it in range mode and set your destination in the PCM or your car's navigation system with the Porsche Intelligent Range Manager. Now that's an option that I would recommend if you plan on taking your Taycan on those long road trips because as soon as you're getting close to that next charging station, your car is gonna automatically preheat or pre-cool the battery. And if you're in range mode, it will automatically start to do that. It won't do that if you don't have the Porsche Intelligent Range Manager on or optioned in your Taycan. So as soon as you plug it into that Electrify America charging station, 
may take a little bit for that charging to ramp up because that battery isn't in that optimal 86 to 95 degrees to charge as quick as it can. So that's, that's a key when we're in range mode. So that's pretty much how it's gonna change when we're in range mode. Uh, it will lower the car just for maximum aerodynamics and efficiency. But other than that, that's pretty much a quick overview of the range mode. Now let's go into my favorite mode, sport mode. Sport mode's going to not limit your speed. It, it's not gonna turn the electric sport sound on. It's not even gonna really change the suspension uh, as far as how high it's gonna be. It's, it's gonna keep it in the standard mode now you can change these items if you want. You can turn on the electric sports sound, but it's gonna be very responsive and it's gonna really regulate that battery cooling and heating because we need it in the optimal temperature for optimal performance when we're in sport mode. Um, sport Plus is this even a little bit more aggressive. I don't really recommend putting it in Sport Plus when you're on the street as I feel like a lot of, in a lot of our cars, it's almost a little bit too aggressive. It's more of kind of for the racetrack mode, to be honest with you. So I wouldn't really recommend putting that on, but this is gonna differ a little bit from sport mode as it's going to lower the car, turn the dampeners into the most sporty of settings. It's also going to uh, turn the electric sport sound on and of course regulate that battery as much as it can so we can get the optimal performance out of the car with efficiency kind of just going out the window when we're in sport plus. Now there's one other drive mode. If you have the optional sports chrono package, which you're gonna have the clock up here in the dash and also your different drive modes here on the steering wheel is gonna be what we call the individual mode. So this is where you can kind of customize how you would like these different drive, driving dynamics. Do I want the car to be in the normal sport or sport plus mode? Do I want the electric sport sound on? Do I want to change the suspension level? between normal, lowered, or low? Or do I wanna also be able to change the dampening of the suspension? So those are the biggest things you can change when you get the individual mode. You can make it more individual to you. So as soon as you get in the car, you can switch that, that, uh, that uh, sports chrono dial to individual and it will change it based on how you saved it. That's pretty much a quick overview of the drive modes. There isn't really any specific time as to when you should use these drive modes. Again, I just recommend using range when you're going on those long road trips. But other than that, put it in whatever uh, drive mode you want it to be in. My favorite, again, is sport mode. But uh, I hope that this was helpful. Sanji, have a quick overview of the different drive modes here on the Taycan. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I really appreciate you guys watching the video and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.